Okay, so good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the next of our PA Forum In Conversation With series. Um, in our feedback last year, we were asked to interview more of our members, and so it's wonderful that I have been able to poke and prod Fiona Boyd a little bit and say, come on, Fiona, let's get you on board today and hear a little bit more about you and your background. So thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't had the opportunity to meet Fiona, she is the executive assistant to the managing partner of JW Hinks, who are an accountancy firm based in Edgebaston, um, in the posh bit of Birmingham, aren't you, lovely? I am, yes. <laughs> Um, it's wonderful to welcome you. Thank you so much for um, joining us and for the courage to do this because I know and I appreciate it yeah. can be quite overwhelming. So thank you so much. And it's wonderful to see everybody who's come to join you um, today and to hear more about you and your story. So tell us first a little bit about you, Fiona. Tell us a little bit about not the working Fiona Boyd, but the personal Fiona Boyd. Tell us a little bit about you. Oh, gosh, what to say. So um, I was born in Scotland. Um, and I moved to sort of England when I was probably about six or seven. We moved to Lincolnshire and um, that's where I sort of went to school and did my training. It's when I first had my, my first job in Lincolnshire. And then we moved, I moved to Birmingham when I was about 18. Uh, well, I thought it was Birmingham, but it was Hells Owen. And <laughs> um, so I moved there. Um, yeah, I come from a military background. So my sisters, my brothers, my brother-in-laws um, come from the army, the RAF. So I've got military background. Um, I did, my sister um, was in Germany for about seven, eight years, so I did a comp crew course, so I did my training at the Baltic Sea, so um, I had um, nearly 10 days of learning to sail a yacht up the Baltic Sea, so I did that in, uh, many years ago, which was fabulous. Uh, yeah, got two daughters, uh, one's at university and my other is a um, zookeeper. She did a training at Dudley Zoo and she works at the Safari Park now as well. So a little bit about okay. Do you get free tickets to the Safari Park? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will be coming with you to the Safari Park, Fiona, I think. I love it there. It's absolutely brilliant. So how, and that's, I find it really interesting when you've got such a strong family background in the military. Yeah. Do you think that's had an impact on kind of you as you've grown up and, and your kind of morals and ethics and ways of working? Yeah. Thing? yeah, I mean, I'm completely different to my brother and sister. Um, so they both went into the army. I, I'm not that way inclined at all, but I definitely think it's had an impact. Um, obviously, you know, as you say, the morals and the structure and the sort of, you know, regimental routines and things, organisation tremendously. Both of them are, are very organised. And I think that's had an impact on me. So, yeah, definitely had an influence. And have you ever had a Scottish accent? I do speak Scottish. I don't know if Tracy's on the, the line, but Tracy knows that. I speak Scottish, so yeah, depending on if I'm speaking to my sister or, you know, my auntie. So yeah, I was in Scotland um, a few weeks ago or a few months ago, and um, yeah, if, if they heard me speak English, they'd be mortified. <laughs> so I think we would find it really unusual to hear you speak Scottish, though, as well. Yeah, so it's I, I I think what does it does it come out when you have a couple of glasses of wine? Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's literally, it's like a switch. Um, it, it depends on who I'm talking to. So for instance, I think it's because I went to school in England. So I'd go, I'd go to school and I've obviously picked up the English accent and then I would come home and I'd obviously have this English twang. And my mum would say, you speak Scottish when you're in this house. So I learned to switch. So whenever I'm speaking to family, it's Scottish. And whenever I'm speaking to friends and family, it's English. Really strange. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So would you say that your career, you know, you started out your career, your very first job in, in Scotland and and it was in it was in Lincolnshire. Oh, it so. was in Lincolnshire, yeah. 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 So what? I, started, I started off there. So growing up, um, I had a neighbour, uh, my best friend um, Maxine, and her dad used to work for this organization. I don't know if anybody knows Tom Walkinshaw, he sort of helped sort of um, bring in the sort of the Formula Ones, you know, the arrows in, in Formula One. And he had um, an agricultural firm in, in Lincolnshire called Track Marshall, where they created tractors and combined harvesters and everything. And my best friend's dad worked for them. So he would go off to um, Sri Lanka and India, and he would sell these sort of this chipboard. I don't know if anybody remembers MFI, but they used to make this chipboard and it's made out of agricultural waste. 
So these organisations would make chipboard and they'd go off to Sri Lanka or all these sort of developing countries to, you know, to build sort of, you know, buildings and etc. And Dennis um, spear hunted that. So when I was only about 16, it was Dennis that got me the job in, in Prestige Systems, which made the board and track marshal that made the equipment. And it was Dennis, my neighbour, that got me into, uh, got, got me a job there. It was a receptionist, my first job as a receptionist. And where my balcony was, so I had this, so it's a manufacturing organisation. You could hear all the boys in, in, in the workshop. But where my desk was, it, um, it sat over the, um, where Tom Walkinshaw, he had his private collection of cars, all these fantastic cars. And I saw the prototypes of um, the, the, the arrows, you know, the, the, the Formula One cars. And my desk, my receptionist desk was sitting over all these private collection of cars. So that was my first job when I was 16. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness me. What a, what a way to start. I bet you were kind of catapulted into this world of wealth and, yeah. you know, um, innovation, so to speak, at the time. Yeah, it was it was a bit daunting at that time as well, because, you know, we used to have, you know, faxes and telexes in those days. I used to, used to use telex machines. And um, I used to have to go onto the shop floor every night to take a memo. I used to hand out memos. So I would have to go onto the shop floor and you come down the stairs onto the, the, the shop floor, which is all manufacturing. You could just hear all the boys whistling and all these comments and everything. It was so daunting. I was only 16. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was an introduction to, to uh, what I do now. <laughs> do you, have you always been around a primarily male-dominated industry, would you say? I've worked in a variety of industries. Yeah, probably. I don't know, really. So... Yeah, manufacturing. So that was my first start um, job in manufacturing. So I was very male dominated. Obviously, I worked in the office offices. When I came to um, Birmingham House Owen, that was for sort of an IT broker. So that was very salesy. I've never worked in a very salesy owner. It was all about targets and, you know, it's all very money based, but, you know, all the sales guys trying to get the, the sales so that, you know, to, obviously to earn more money. So that was all about IT and that. So that was, that was in House Owen. And then I came into the city and, and I worked for surveyors, um, chartered accountants. I worked for HSBC, which is a big blue chip company here on Calthorp Road. So I wouldn't say very male dominated, but, you know, I've worked in a variety of different industries. I've worked in, as you know, I've worked in education. So I've worked in, I'm lucky enough to work in both sectors. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And what, what you, you, I think um, you started out your career within an apprenticeship, didn't you? Is that right? So yeah. tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so when I was Lincolnshire, so I had an opportunity. So it, it, as I say, it was Dennis, you know, who got me this opportunity, but it was all YTS schemes. I don't know if anybody remembers YTS schemes. So I'm really passionate, as you know, about apprenticeship schemes, you know, I mean, because it's the way I learn, I, you know, it's, it's how I learn. And it was just a fantastic opportunity for me. So I did a YTS scheme um, and then did my training. So, you know, did my day-to-day -day job and then I'd go one day a week to college but during that time as well, I, you know, I, I did night school on my on myself. So I went to night school course and I did shorthand and uh, database, you know, training as well. I mean, it was fantastic for me. It was a real, you know, I, mean, I came from a sort of not very privileged background. It was really difficult, you know. Um, so the, the YTS scheme really helped me sort of gain that learning. And it was the right learning for me at the time. And I had the, as I say, had the opportunity to do night school as well, which, you know, gave me the skills to sort of, and the confidence to, to move to Birmingham. Yeah, oh, and when he came to Birmingham, it must have been quite, because I mean, uh, my own, you know, how I can relate to that is I've, I've worked overseas and you're just plonked in this new area and you've got to try and make new friends, you've got to try and find a new job, you've got to try and build your life back up, like, you know, from, from scratch really yeah. and build it back up again. So what was it like when you came to Birmingham for the first time? Yeah, daunting. Yeah, it was, it was really daunting, you know, you know, coming to a sort of a new area and, and you know, trying to have no friends here or, you know, it was a bit lonely, it's, you know, to begin with. Um, at that age as well, you know, it's about being independent. It was all about learning to look after yourself, make sure the rent was paid, make sure you could get, you know, on the travel, you know, get yourself to work, make sure you're at work on time and, and things like that. So it was a bit daunting, really daunting, but you make friends, you know, you, you spend so much time at work. That's where you make your friendship groups. And I've still got friends now that I made, you know, back in them days. So, yeah, daunting, but a fantastic, you know, catapult, you know, for the start of my, my life, my career. 
And so how did, how did, uh, so when you came to Birmingham and where, where was your first job then, sorry, from when you, when you arrived? So health, and so macro, do you know about, everybody know where macro is? So there's a, there's a building, there's sort of in, um, offices there. So that's where I worked, worked there for about four years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was with um, Prestige Systems, which was an IT broker company. Which yeah. Was Hewlett Packard and Deck, you know, computers there. And yeah. then. I wanted to get into the city, you see, at that time, I don't, you know, come from sort of, you know, little Lincolnshire, village in Lincolnshire to Hells Owen. Um, and I was desperate, to, you know, after a few years of, you know, gaining confidence. I was a receptionist in Lincoln. So when I came to sort of Hells Owen, it was very, you know, I introduced to doing more letters, doing, I was doing invoices, petty cash. So I was more than a, a receptionist at that point. So I was really keen to sort of move into the city and grow my skills. I wanted to be a secretary wants to be a secretary so I wanted to sort of you know learn more so yeah yeah got a job in in the city and I went to work for um Chesterton's which is the Mills and Reeves building where Mills and Reeves are now yeah that used to be Chesterton's and I, I worked there for about four years yeah and that's where I really learned my skills there oh fantastic so were you were you part of a bigger team there or were yeah. you were you working quite independently or how, like, did you have a good support network within the organization for you there yeah, it, it was, it was obviously I was very sort of, you know, new, but um, it was my first sort of, you know, secretarial role. It was a big department. It was rent reviews, dealing with rent reviews. Um, so I had a big team and, um, you know, it was two, you know, three or four partners. I, there was a, you know, a couple of secretaries. It was a big organisation, bigger than I'd worked for before. Um, but I just, I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, lot, lots, lots of skills, lots of typing, lots of dictaphone at that time. It was it was very heavily typing at that point. You know, the role has completely changed now. But at that time, it was lots of typing, English renewals and things like that. You miss those days at all, Fiona. Oh, 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 <laughs> days at all, no. <laughs> I know, I know, you know, I, I know a lot of people still do a lot of dictation, a lot of type. You know, it's it's essential, isn't it, for some for some, some industries, industries some yeah. Sectors. Um, particularly um, but I can't imagine having to do that to that level of volume it must have been quite it must have been quite I mean did you find that secretary roles were abundant at that time or were they really quite hard to get no I never struggled at, at the time I don't believe we used to I used to get jobs jobs used to be um, sort of advertised through the paper I can't remember what the paper was called Tracy will know I can't remember what the <laughs> was called, but there was a Birmingham paper Evening North- Mail was, Say, it the, was it the evening mail? Was it the evening mail? I think so. Yeah, and the Birmingham, oh, yeah, and Birmingham one. So there was always jobs there. There was always jobs available. So yeah, but I mean, I was all about sort of building up my experience at the time. You know, it's all about um, you, know, you know gaining more because I love my time at Chesterton's. Absolutely loved it. I worked for an arbitrator there as well, which was completely a slightly different work. It was you know sort of dealing with with, with that sort of level, which was really interesting. But then, yeah, I moved to it from there. I moved to another chartered um, surveyors, you know, just for a couple of years. And then I had my children after, after that. OK. And did you did you have did you have a, quite a career break after like, when, you, when you had your children? Just probably about three years. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So I went. So I think Rebecca. Yeah. So when Rebecca sort of, you know, got to about three, that's when I went back to back to work. And that's when I went to into education because I wanted to find something that would fit round. I was nervous as well. I was no, been out of work for about three years and obviously being a mum. I was really nervous about coming back into the industry. I was thinking, I've lost all my skills. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and things like that. So um, there was a school, um, high school down the road from me that was looking for a um, sort of maternity cover for, you know, PA to the head teacher. And I thought, oh, it's down the road, it'll be fine. And because it's only a temporary role, it just sort of builds up my confidence. And typically me, um, you know, sort of took to it like a duck to water and wanted to change the world and, you know, (laughs) absolutely loved it. So, um, yeah, the maternity cover came to an end and the school became a teaching school. So I don't know if anybody knows about teaching schools. We were the first um, 100 schools in the country to become a teaching school. So I got moved over to there, which was fascinating, actually. And we got this grant money and basically we had to build up a new business um, it was about um, training apprenticeships or, or training new new people coming in who want to be a teacher but they didn't want to go to university and sit you know a full, t- full you know four-year degree or whatever you know they wanted on the job training which is what I'm all about 
So as a teaching school, that's what we did. We'd had students come in and they learned on the job. They'd go into classrooms and they would learn how to be a teacher. They'd do the observations um, and skills. And then they would go off to university and do like one day a week and things like that. So I found that side of it absolutely fascinating because that's where I collaborated a lot with the universities. It was in conflict really, because obviously universities provide PGC these qualifications and here we are little teaching schools doing exactly the same thing but just a different format but we couldn't give the qualification we had to work with or at university you know Birmingham University and that to, to provide the the qualifications so it was building that time which is what I realized I absolutely it was about building collaborations building a program you know and and you know monitoring people on their courses and things like that developing the brand for the teaching school developing it promoting it and bringing in much needed revenue for the school so yeah absolutely love that side of things i was going to say because it must have been quite difficult it must have been quite different working for public sector from going from you know the the, the types of of um uh the types of tasks that you would have been doing in your in your previous roles yeah. Everybody says that. I, I never did. You know, yeah. I think, you know, I've worked for so many different industries, you know, manufacturing, IT, accounts. I'm, I'm in accountancy now. I've worked in banking, you know, uh, surveyors and, and the education. I think our skills are transferable. I know it's like the buzzword, you know, transferable skills, but it really is true. You know, it was very heavy diary management as well. So it wasn't different. It was just sometimes a slightly different mindset. You know the, the education what well, my experience anyway the, the mindset was slightly different to, to you know to, to our corporate industry um yeah. but not really i didn't find it there's benefits in both i i took skills from the corporate world into education which they loved um but equally there's stuff that goes on in the education sector that you know benefits the, the corporate world absolutely and when did you when did you hear about the opportunity at so then did you go to hsbc after that so, oh, no, no, so I did that. Uh, so, yeah, so from when I was at Chesterton, then I went to HSBC uh, okay. and I was four years at HSBC. Sorry, had uh, my, my, my girls. Oh, no, I had Charlotte, um, but I carried on working with Charlotte. I didn't I didn't have a break. So, wow. so yeah, so now I was at HSB. I was actually, <laughs> sounds awful. Really. My, my water's broke when I was at work. <laughs> No, no, it's really, it's very, it's very different when you, when you, when you hear about your journey and the, you know when we, when we do these types of interviews and you see just completely how different it was back then. It was a very, very different place to work. It was a very, very different yeah. environment. You know, even when you were saying before about um, coming down the stairs of receptionists and all the men are all whistling you yeah. and you know and and yeah. heckling you. It's just something that just would not be accepted yeah. at all today. You know, so it's. Yeah. It's, it's great. It was a completely different, completely different world then, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I mean, I've really, I feel, really seen the difference in how the role has evolved, you know, from, from, from a very young age, you know, even it was sort of working in different sectors, you know, the role has definitely changed, I feel. It was very much a secretarial role, very much, you know, sort of typing memos and things like that. And not the, the, the role not being used to be more strategic, no, not being used, you know, more to sort of, um, as it is now, I mean, I, I feel that my role has really evolved in the fact that I do very little typing. It's very much about helping the business, you know, perform, you know, helping the departments perform, you know, making sure, you know, we know what services we're delivering, tracking deadlines, you know, supporting the managers of those departments to, you know, to sort of function so that the, the senior team are getting the reports that they want, getting the information that they want to help make those decisions. I've definitely seen that evolve but also I think I've evolved as well because I think in, you know looking back to my time I love my time at HSBC you know made some really good friends there to, to this day but I don't think I fully understood the products that we were selling at HSBC I don't think I fully understood the business model of you know and, and where I could help or where I could fit into that I sort of did my job and my team um, and I think the, the, the sort of the nuance that are coming through now, the Aspire group and things like that, um, I think the, the young ones coming through have definitely got more of a, a, an insight to, to the business, you know, and what the business is doing and where they fit into the business and how they can help. Yeah. I think we've I think we've moved into a time where we we share more. I think there was so yeah. many for years. Yes. It was so many behind closed doors. 
so and so can't hear about that we can't tell that person we don't want this person to know about that but we now work in a far more collaborative okay. approach and i think people i think businesses are starting to understand that the more that they understand and share with people that are working and representing them on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. is actually way more beneficial for them than trying to keep things yes segregated and, and, and de departmentalized so to speak and it's bringing those departments together to try and work with each other as much as they possibly can yeah would you say that you were you do have you had bosses that have really given you those opportunities to kind of you know excel and and grow and and find out about those different areas that you're interested to in, find out more about the business or have you found it challenging over years to try and encourage them to give you more information it's a bit of both. I mean, I genuinely feel that this is sort of, you know, the challenge that I think all PAs, EAs, or, you know, face, you know, I think it depends on the organisation. I think it depends on the person that you work for. Um, I think I've been pretty lucky in the roles that I've had, but you always have them moments. You always have that partner where, you know, they don't sort of, you know, sort of value enough, you know, to sort of, you know, share information or help you sort of develop. But, I think I've been pretty lucky over the years and then but then I if I don't feel if I've not if I feel that like I haven't had that information or all those opportunities I've, I've moved on because I think I've been quite eager you know to work for the best person that I can work for it's always about for me it's always about working for that the best person you know that the, the MD or the, the top guy really you know so where I can sort of make a difference to the firm so um, how did the opportunity at JW Hinks come about? How did you hear about it? Um, I was looking. So, yes, yeah, so I was, I've been in the sort of edu education sector for eight years. So I was yeah. there eight years and I was getting really nervous about only being seen as sort of, you know, being working in education because I've, I've got this variety of experience in co the corporate world, manufacturing, IT, chartered uh, surveys, etc. Um, I sort of tested my you know tested my cv out there a little bit and all i got from agencies is like oh no you can only work in education and i was like i remember getting really cross because you know they only looked at my last job they didn't look that i'd worked for hspc or jessison's or a manufacturing organ and i got really cross they only saw my last job and so i found that really difficult to move out of education and it, it came up sort of a priority really because i, I have got this broad you know experience and your our skills are transferable you know you know managing somebody's diary in, in one sector makes no difference to managing a diary in somebody else's sector so um so I, I, I was looking to because i've been there for such a long time and you know i wanted to sort of move out so it, it was a bit challenging sort of moving out and then i saw the job for jw hinks and it was um again it was a temporary role it was to support two partners um, transition they were retiring so it's the transition of their clients over to uh, another partner so um yeah and i've been here ever since <laughs> so did you meet did neil interview you or was it so neil wasn't the md at the time it was okay. jenny okay so jenny was um she was retiring um jenny and, and paul was two paul was the md and jenny was a partner and both of them were retiring so it's I don't probably understand it. They give like two years notice or 18 months notice. Um, so it's that transition. They've got like, say, 2,000 you know, odd clients each. And all those clients have got to be transferred over to another partner. I mean, Jenny had been working for the organisation for nearly 40 years. And she built up, you know, strong relationship with our clients. It's really personal client. Having a, an accountancy firm, you've got personal clients you know, that you've worked for for generations and obviously when it comes to money it's really it's really important to have them relationships so the transition is quite um quite important mm -hmm. so um so yeah so i was here to help smooth the ways and transfer them over and building up that sort of relationship and things like that so i was here for yeah so yeah 18 months to help the transition and then neil um was obviously you know coming into the md role oh fantastic so did you find that difficult um did you did they make you aware that when you were coming in it was to help and support that kind of transition or did it make you nervous that they were they were going to kind of be retiring you thinking what's going to happen to me when they retire yeah no I did because it, it was it was a temporary role it, it, it was a tw you know 18 months but I thought again you know working in it because nobody would look at me before because it was education so nobody would give me the opportunity to, even though they would only look at that one that one my last job 
so it, this was a sort of 18 months temporary role so um I, I i took it and then obviously yeah i was a bit nervous but then i sort of again <laughs> made my mark and um i remember going to the um, to the lady at the time who was doing hr and i said you do realize you know i'm on a temporary role and you know i go in a few months and she was like oh my god no 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 we've got to get that changed so yeah it was a little bit daunting and and so um when was it then that you started working with neil so yeah so when jenny retired neil became into he came as the md and then that's when i started working you know directly with neil and uh, the other partners yeah so i've been i would have been here about 18 months at that point Oh, wow. And so how has your relationship blossomed from there, would you say? Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Yeah, obviously working, he'd never had a PA before. And um, so it, it was all about sort of, you know, building up our relationship and building up about, you know, how he likes things, you know, how he likes things and how he works. I mean, Neil's an auditor. So um, he, I mean, he's fabulous. His attention to detail is absolutely second to none. I've learned so much from him. So it's learning about what he likes and how he likes things done and the information that he likes and vice versa, you know, because I can I get carried away with ideas. I want to, you know, change the world and put this in and change that. And what I've learned, I think, over the years here is particularly with a set of accountants is rather than going, you know, you, you, I mean, I've changed quite a number of different processes since I've been here. Rather than just going in and going, I want to do this, I want to do that. They can't visualise it. If it's not numbers, they can't they can't visualise it. So I've realised that I've actually got to sort of put something in place or change something, trial it, and then go to him and go, right, I've done this, and this is how it's working, and this is you know, and I've realised to that's how to sort of you know get things moving here or improve the communication, trial it, and present it to him at that point. So would you say that it's helped you to write business cases quite a lot then? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, he's um, it's because there's there's eight partners here, and I work with all of them in different capacities. So you know, Neil's the MD. Uh, I work with Dan. Dan's the HR partner. So uh, you know, I look after the HR side of things, the administration side of HR. You know, absent, you know, holiday and um, pay rises, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I work with Dan closely on that. So I work with so I work with different, all the different partners in a different capacity. Peter, he he's our compliance. So he looks after a little bit like we get offsted a little bit like school. Um, every few years we have to we get like an offsted in financial world. So it's it's making sure that all the compliance and all the regulatory things have got to be done. So I work with all of the partners in in a, in a different function really. Oh wow! And I think you so you you manage your team there, don't you? So how many yeah. how many people do you uh, manage within your team? I've got um, three secretaries, a uh, receptionist. Uh, there's a practice um, administrator. Um, I don't. I, I wouldn't say that I manage Trevor. I would say that I really work on a par with Trevor. Trevor's my. You know, me and Trevor work really closely together. Um, so yeah, I've got yeah, to say three secretaries and a receptionist, and, and then there's Trevor as well. And how you obviously with your passion with apprenticeships, how is that? Are you when the whole apprenticeship scheme came out and came into? I mean, I remember we were trying to look at it in the hospitality industry, and it just there was an absolute. It just was so overwhelming the amount of information about apprenticeships and the opportunities that are available. Have you tackled that at JW Hinks? Yeah, I mean, pretty lucky really because you know we we are a sort of you know training organization organization anyway we, we train a lot of accountants so we we always have about two or three trainees each year um so you know i i, I look after that as well i look after the students on their program and things like that but we've never had an admin apprentice so um it was about three three years three four years ago i sort of looked into that and we had so you know looked into that and we had our first administrative apprentice which was great we've never done that before and that was a real turning point you know to, to sort of get them to sort of look at the admin and invest in the administration side of things and you know it's all about promoting about how we can have you know time back and things like that but yeah so we've had a couple of apprentices and I'm looking this year as well for, for our third one. Oh fantastic that's brilliant news it's so good that it's just such a successful program and you must be quite proud particularly because that's yeah. where you started your career as yeah, well absolutely i mean yeah yeah definitely it's an opportunity not everybody learns the same way you know not everybody which is why i get passionate about you know obviously the apprenticeship program but just different training programs in different workshops and obviously the pa forum and everything that the pa forum does all the workshops and upskilling and 
social skills as well. I think the, the apprenticeship doesn't, doesn't give them the qualification. It gives them the social skills, you know, being able to speak to a client on the phone, being able to do the reception work, you know, do the post, etc. Yeah, so, yeah. Is that challenging sometimes because, you know, if, if you lose somebody, then you'll kind of have to step in or if you, you yeah. know, and, and, then, and then the whole... <laughs> <laughs> the whole the whole recruitment the whole recruitment process yeah. as well you're going through that recruitment process again are you finding yeah. that um it's difficult to attract talent at the moment or is it are people yeah. moving around or what would you say i mean I think we, we, we're recruiting anyway at the moment looking for auditors and if anybody knows any <laughs> auditors um but yes it, it's difficult i think at this time you know this sort of you know where we are at the moment about recruiting it's really difficult i think what i found challenging obviously with the, the admin side and apprentices is that um you get these young you know these young ones coming straight from sort of college or, or, or wherever and it's really daunting get them on i mean my big thing i want to get them on the switchboards you want to get them sort of answering the phones and doing things like that it's really daunting and the time it takes to sort of train them up and things like that and then you get them trained up. I mean, I remember, this is the thing, I remember it from when I was that age. You'd sort of train them up and they get into a really good position you know, after two years or three years. And then the bugger off and goes somewhere else, you know. And you think, oh my God, I've got to start all over again and get, you know, someone else. But, but in all fairness, I remember doing that. I remember being in, you know, when I worked at, you know, the, the organisation at Hells Irene and, the, you know, when I worked at Chesterton's, um, I just wanted that experience. I wanted to work for different sectors, different companies, different size companies. I wanted to work for big blue chip companies, HSBC, et cetera, et cetera, to, you know, I work for, I mean, you know, JW Hanks is only about 50, 58 people big. It's fabulous. So, you know, so it's daunting in that you train these little ones up and you get to a certain point, you think, because obviously I'm looking at succession, I'm, I'm looking... To bring them the little ones up so i can fill in my succession i've got you know some yeah. retires you know coming up soon um but yeah it's daunting and it's you know you think, oh, here we go again back to square one it's interesting you said about um phone because is that is it uh i think there's been quite a common feedback actually throughout a lot of people um that it's incredibly difficult to attract talent that are coming into maybe their first role yeah. Um, actually the telephone skills um yeah. to be able to pick up the phone and talk to yeah. somebody and um, purely because of the world we live in nowadays text yeah. messages email you know we almost lose that essential yeah. skill of being able to to talk yeah. to each other and actually it's what makes things like this even more you know daunting and nerve-wracking because it's not something that we're used to doing all the time and so it's you know it, it, like I, when I was talking to Fiona about this so just pretend that me and you're on the phone we're having a yeah. chat you know it's all good um yeah. but I think it's it is it's challenging and it, it it's hard because how do you teach that how do you teach somebody at conversational skills on the phone yeah being professional on the and I remember I remember going on a receptionist course when I was like 16 17 about that smiling when you're on the phone and repeat repeating the number back and I remember trying to go back and go how was I taught how was you know and then you, the thing is, is a lot of the time we, we do things in our day-to-day -day jobs that you can't you don't document you know somebody if somebody said to you okay what do, what do you do today what what do you do give me a day in the life of Lisa you know um, and you'd be going, oh God, I can't think, because you do things automatically all the time that you don't document, and to sort of relay that to, you know, like a real newbie, you know, who's never done anything about the sort of, you know, professionalism and smiling when you're on the phone and repeating the number back and, you know, making sure you've got the correct name, et cetera, and clarifying information and stuff like that. It is, and yeah, trial and error, <laughs> trial and error. Yeah, and I think... I think that's a good thing. I think, you know, we want to be able to encourage more people into the profession and we want to be able to, to bring that talent through. So it's just about nurturing them and training them and teaching them yeah. things that maybe we not thought about before um, and, and really bringing it back to basics about those, those interpersonal skills and communication yeah. skills. I mean, one of the things I get, you know, a little bit, you know, I write about you know is I chose to do this I love my job and I chose to do this and when I'm recruiting when I'm recruiting people for the admin right you know for an apprentice 
I want somebody who wants to do this. I don't want somebody, you know, who it doesn't have to be an apprentice. It could be any, you know, I've, I've taken, I've, I've recruited and I've been before. I just want somebody who wants to do this. I want somebody who's passionate about it. I don't want somebody to go, oh, I want to be a lawyer, but I'll just do a bit of admin, you know, in the meantime, because, you know, we are such, this is such an important role, you know, and we are the foundations that without me and my team, everything would just sort of topple. We are the foundations. We're the ones that keep things going. We're the ones that keep things flowing, systems going. We're the ones that are keeping conversations, opening up dialogues, making sure that things are being improved, you know, and I get so passionate about this that I don't want um, anybody who doesn't want to do admin or, you know, it's not just admin, you know, anybody doesn't want to come into this role because it's a really important role. It's really important. Yeah. So I don't and want I think to. that's where, you know, we're, we're talking about going into schools and talking to the next generation of PAs and it's, you re, it's even even further yeah. away now. People are like, what do you want to be? I want to be an influencer. I want to be a model. I want to be this. I want to be that. Yeah. It's, the the role is is ever edging further and further away as to what somebody is coming from saying oh, I really want to do that job because yeah. yeah the world is changing so fast so it's like we've got to try and keep and just do all we can to try and encourage people into this profession yeah and it, it's about I mean I'm so excited about you you know the, you know you talk about getting into schools I think that's fabulous I think that's fantastic because. You know, it, it's these you know being at school, these little ones coming through, but knowing you know how we can impact the business. You know, I know that I've made a difference to the, this business. I know that I've helped to drive it forward. I know that I've helped to provide you know good customer service, improve customer service. And I know that I've made that difference. You know, and it's just not about you know doing bills, timesheets, you know diary management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We do so many other skills. In, you know, and I know that all of our, our roles are slightly different and slightly, you know, and I want these little ones to know that we can influence, you know, and we can make a difference for yeah. business, yeah. Absolutely. So what would you say, I mean, obviously the pandemic is, is huge, but what would you say has been your biggest challenge throughout your career? Throughout my career? Oh, gosh. Um, communication, <laughs> really. I think what, you know, the thing that I always even now you know the, the, the challenge that i have is, is consistency communication is always the thing that we fall down with you know getting through you know i'll have a night i because i'll sit in sort of the partners and the managers meetings and various in the office we all do we, we hear what's going on on the ground you know then you end up talking to your senior team you hear what they're talking about and i can see that sort of you know the difference you know perspectives so it's all about you know communications and getting something across the line you know you want to make change something you want to make a difference and you know that's going to work so you just need that sort of that, that okay or that authority to, to get it over the line and it's making people see how it can work so i think i, should, I think the biggest challenges that i sort of have it, it is that it's about getting my message across to knowing how to utilize me you know I've got we've had three new partners in the last couple of years and it's getting and then, you know it's getting them to know how they can utilize me and I've got a service here I've got products here my team you know we can help you, you and your department we can help you in your role and um, we can make you look rosy as anything but you need to know how to so that's been a challenge you know getting new partners to know how they can utilize me yeah a hundred percent I think that again it comes down to that communication piece doesn't yeah. it hundred yeah. percent um I think well what would you say then let's let's celebrate your kind of what would you say has been one of your biggest success stories like in your career what would you say has has been some yeah. well two things spring to mind which I know we'll touch on uh, you know before on the education the teaching school I was really proud of that because we, we had a new build I, you know I was part of the project team on having a new training centre built so that was really, you know, and the new brand and the new training and um, programs that we that we built and you know worked in collaboration with um, universities and you know felt really proud of that. Not only that, um, I tended personally attended to the government for some for some funding, and you know I I got that funding for the teaching school um, and then obviously had to sort of manage that that, that funding through an evidence where we spent it. Which was which was fabulous. So I was really proud of that. So I thought that, and I learned loads doing that as well. So, and then the second thing that I'm really proud of, and is is Hannah 
planner um, Carol Hanron. Um, she won the um, Newcomers of the Year award a, a couple of years ago, and I'm really proud of that. You know, sort of nominating her because Hannah is a real asset. She's like my second in command here. It, 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 you know, JW Hinks, um, and she's really flourished in the role. She she's took on lots from me, and she's really flourished. Um, so I'm really proud of Hannah. Really proud of her winning that award. So yeah, that was yeah. Really for us as a firm as well. Yeah, and I think it was, you know, uh, it was our first year. I know Tracy will be nodding away there, but it was our first year of the awards when um, Hannah won. And yeah. um, it was it was lovely because you nominated her and you were encouraged. We'd never, we'd never done anything like that. That was a, a bit of a milestone. So, yes, it was brilliant, you know, but to sort of get the company to sort of invest in, and realise the importance of admin and champion, you know, admin in you know, when we, we put her forward, it was a milestone for our firm as well. It was like, oh my God, you know, I've had been the person who can win an award on, and I've been, you know, so I, I was really proud of that for, you know, obviously Hannah, but, you know, is a milestone for the company as well. We turned a corner. <laughs> what was it like when, did Neil come on the night? Yeah, oh God, yeah, he had a table. It was fabulous. Oh, what, did, what, did, what did he think when he came for the first time and saw us oh, in one room? Yeah. He loved it. And, and, and that's the thing, you know, that's what I want to say to everybody, really, you know, how I feel about this, Dan. I want to get our um, MDs and our partners and our CEOs, I want to get them at our events because it was the first time they'd been to the event and they saw, all, I mean, Neil knew, um, who's the chap, Dan, from his ORS, the, the, the guy who's Yeah, Carl Ward. Carl. Yeah. So yeah. Neil knows Carl, and um, so when we went to the awards, and Neil's going, oh my God, Carl's here, and I was like, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And um, so it was a real eye-opener to see not only all the other organisations supporting their PAs, so it, it was a real milestone, really, and the, the firm really saw, you know, what we do in the region and how other organisations, et cetera, et cetera. Hence, we, we joined, the, you know, we subscribed to the, you know, to the uh, membership and, you know, so it, that was a real proud moment because it had a dominoes effect. It, it opened their eyes about what we're doing, opened their eyes about how other organisations are supporting PAs. And, you know, obviously, you know, the PA form the subscriptions and about what we get out of that, and oh. skilling, et cetera. So, yeah, that was a real proud moment. Sorry, lovely. I think I was. I think my computer froze. Then I'm so sorry. Okay. But what? What did you? Uh, what was it like when Hannah? What was it like as her manager and as Hannah? You know, came back after that. How was it for her after the awards process? And and oh, she. I mean, it's fabulous, isn't it? You know, for her. I mean, she she felt really sort of invested in, and you know, she came back absolutely sort of on a high, and she was like raring to go and. I mean, it, it really has made a difference. I mean, she really has flourished, you know, from, from from there as well. I mean, she's took on loads. I mean, she's in our pension section and she manages Peter and she, she manages all the, the, the you know, staff training, etc. So it really boosted Hannah and, you know, she's upskilled, she's learned, she's, you know, invested in training, she's learned so much more skills. So there's been a real benefit. We've really seen that a real benefit, like I've been promoting, you know, and it's, it's the absolute truth though. With, you know, she, she's brought those skills back and it's, you know, that investment in Hannah and that sort of boost, you know, she, it's what we've, we're seeing the benefits of it now. Absolutely. Amazing. Oh, no, thank you. It's lovely to hear and it's lovely yeah. to see, you know, she does so, because she's, she, you know, it, it was fantastic to be able to kind of go through that process with her in the first year. And it's great always when you see managers like yourself who really yeah. take the time to put forward their you know even if it's one or two people it's just really nice because it just it really does increase the motivation of people and then obviously after that you were a finalist at the office manager awards last year weren't you i was yeah very daunting yeah very daunting how was that experience for you oh, yeah daunting because i don't i've never really done that i'm very good at sort of you know i suppose we all are aren't we very good at supporting and helping to drive business and supporting our, our, our senior team and supporting staff, etc. But when it comes to myself, it's a little bit different. So yeah, totally out of my comfort zone. But yeah, it was it was a lovely weekend. Well, congratulations <laughs> to you, lovely. It was the inaugural uh, event last year, so it was great to be able to see you celebrated at the awards as well. So thank you. Right. And I know, obviously, you know, we've got we've got some just a bit of time left, but. 
Um, I can't let you go without talking about how incredibly passionate you are about learning and development. I don't think I've ever met anybody really that is so into L&D. Like you really do. You're so passionate about it. And I think that's what I love, you know, so much that you, the encouragement that you have for a lot of your team and for them, you know, and also for yourself, your own personal and professional development and you know, I, I obviously really value the fact that you're part of our learning and development committee. And, you know, we 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 never had a learning and development conference years ago until it was something that we kind of discussed and spoke about. So how has that been, um, you know, how has that been for you? Yeah, I am, you know, and I think it's because I, I you know, didn't grow up in a privileged, you know, area or, or, or you know, family and things like that, you know. And I, I think I recognise the opportunities that I've had on my journey, you know, and how... I always say this to my kids, you know, you know, every experience, you know, every person you meet, every different, you know, try different experiences introduces you to a new path or a new journey. So, yeah, and it can make a difference. The people that you meet, the, you know, the, the, the things that you learn on, you know, can influence, you know, how you change your role or, you know, et cetera. So, I, yeah, I love training and I love giving um seeing somebody you know achieve in their role you know so I, I I do I love it and I want to give you know the apprentices that like opportunities you know you some of these other ones coming through I want to give them an opportunity because you know they can you know be where I am today sort of thing you know so yeah and what would you say so what what would you say you know since you've been part of the forum is that the like the how has it benefited you really over the over the last few years? Because I remember, and again, I think Trace, you know, Tracy will um agree with this as well. Is I remember when I sent out the first ever email about an event that we were going to do part Regis. And I think it was really interesting. I think Tracy was one of the people and you, Fiona, that instantly came yeah. back and was like, Oh, what's this about? I'd love to get involved in this. And yeah. and, and you know, so that was like six years ago. Yeah, <laughs> it Bonkers. Was really my boss, actually, you know, Jenny, I was saying earlier, who, who was retiring and I came in to sort of help the transition. Transition. It was Jenny, she, she saw the advert and she said, oh, I think this will be really good, you know, what you want to go along. And I, so I came along and, you know, what I, because I never had that, I don't know anybody here, there was no, I never, throughout my journey, I've never had anything to benchmark myself against. I never... You know, you, you know, spoke to other PAs or liaise with other PAs, you know, it was all very sort of, you know, you know, I, this is my job and, you know, don't take my job and things like that. So we never shared best practice, you know, you go to a new organisation, reinventing the wheel, etc. So when I came along to that first meeting, I was very daunting, you know, absolutely fabulous, but so excited that, you know, and I still get like that now to sort of, you know, have an organisation where, you know, we're collaborating, you know, if I get stuck, you know, I'll email you and go, do you know anybody that can help me with this database or anybody that's got the skills to do this database? And then sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, it's a bit lonely at the top, you know, when your CEOs, MDs, etc. it's lonely at the top. So they use, they use you to offload and it's really difficult. And it can be like that for us as well. It can be a little bit lonely. You never quite know whether you're doing the right thing or if you're heading in the right direction or if you're doing the right support. So having that opportunity to talk and liaise with other PAs in a similar role or a similar organisation or even, you know, completely different, you know, role to to aspire to has just been absolutely instrumental in my learning in these last few years. And, you know, what I've taken back to the firm as well, because I've never had, there was never anything like that before. There was never anywhere to network or, you know, liaise with. So I just find it incredibly beneficial for me, but also for my team, because I'll bring my team along and go, you know, the ability to network, walk into a room where you don't know anybody and go, hi, <laughs> you know, because everybody's feeling the same. So, yeah, I've just found it incredibly, you know, beneficial. I think I think we found it, I think just like the awards, we found it incredibly overwhelming. I think when we, when we did our first conference and we're like, oh my God, hang on a minute, there's this many people that are... I think we had 250 people in our first conference and it was just amazing to see that many people in one room. But didn't that tell you, yeah, but didn't that tell you about how many other people felt the same, you know, to, you know, that they could come along. I mean, that, I remember the first one, it was just amazing the feedback that we got and it was like, oh my God, you know, yeah. there's so many PAs and admin people out there. Who not, it, you know, it's, about inspirational but aspiring to as well we were so you know we've got I remember the first conference talking to people who 
had just started their new job. They'd just they'd never done an, you know, an admin role before. And they came along to the conference and they were going, oh my God, I can't wait, I want to do this. So providing that opportunity to network to gain inspiration, but aspiring to as well. It was just, yeah, it was a really good reaction in the first year. Fabulous, yeah. Fantastic. Well, just to let you know, um, we have added a new area to the forum portal, which will be going live, we hope, tomorrow. Um, and that is exactly the space um, where you can go on, you can type a question and you can ask for help on something, you can ask for advice, you can ask for a supplier that you might be looking for, some training that you might like or anything like that. So you go into the forum section, type your question and then everybody can comment underneath and, and share their um, uh, their advice and support. So that it's it's again keeping that that connectivity between our members and helping and supporting each other. So Tom's, well, I apologise my email's been going off while we've been interviewing you, Fiona. It's because all the testing has just been coming through at the same time. But, um, you know, we are going to um, our conferences, obviously, um, coming up on the 15th of June at Millennium Point. So when we spoke about this this year, you know, we 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 very much discussed about practical learning, didn't we? And we just said, I think what we really want to do this year is just bring everybody back together in one place. If we can, we have offered a virtual solution for anyone who does might not feel comfortable or can't make it in person. But it was all about our, our brief this year was all about finding your voice, wasn't it? And it was about, you know, creating that that community feel back together, but finding your voice. So it's more around the inspiration and the motivational aspects, isn't it, Fiona? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And virtual for, for a couple of years now. And, you know, you gain so, I mean, although, I mean, I must admit, I think the virtual ones have been absolutely jam-packed, absolutely jam-packed, absolutely great. But coming together you get so much more out of it meeting people talking to people networking having a glass of prosecco and you know and things like that so yeah looking forward to the face-to-face -face ones yeah what's what would you say out of our kind of session plan is the most like what sort of ones are you looking forward to oh i'm looking i am looking forward to listening to mark yeah so mark's um he works with world record you know world record you know to achieve these world record thing you know and he's does these extreme sports but what he does is he, is that right Dan? he supports these world record holders who do extreme support um uh, sports he supports them to achieve so i'm really interested about listening to marcus experiences but how he supports yes. these people to achieve in these extreme yes. sports uh, but yes yeah, simone really looking about listening hearing about simone about how she um the inclusion of a PA role. She's looking at inclusion about, you know, you get certain biases of um, PA roles. And yeah. she's going to talk about how um, she's been championing sort of the inclusion and rose, raising the profile of a personal assistant that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. So Mark, Mark was really fascinating because literally he got us when he said he just looks at the person who does the world record attempt and they can just literally look at each other and just know right now it's not the right time. I need to remove that person from that situation. He's not feeling comfortable right now. No, and that, that level of trust. And he, you know, Mark was saying to us that within that 20 minutes of that person achieving the world record, there's 80 people that stand behind that personal side by side. And he's that person that helps that world record person be that person for that 20 minutes. And I thought, Oh my God, we need to have you for conference because that is absolutely brilliant. That relates to our audience so well. Um, and Simone, like you say, Fiona has been uh, championing the role of the EAPA secretary, office manager, administrative assistant to be considered equal as any other role within the business. So I think it's going to be a really fascinating day and it's going to be great. But before we wrap up today, what advice do you think that you, I'm just plunging this one on you, sorry. So what what would you like to, what was your kind of, if you could leave a couple of nuggets, but would you kind of wrap up the day? What what would you say? What would you like to share? What, about, what, about my role or the and new just one? About, or yeah, just about where we are right now and, and the future and, and what your advice would be to anybody that's kind of, you know, we, we are coming out of COVID, which is great. Yeah. Um, but, and, the, and as you say, the role is constantly evolving all yeah. the time. What, what, would you, what would your advice be if for people that are kind of tackling the rest of the year ahead? 
Yeah, well, yeah, talk to each other, you know, I think, you know, use the forum, use the community. I mean, we, I suppose, like lots of people, we are working hybrid at the moment, and we're just starting to introduce, you know, one day a month, bringing people back. Um, the biggest challenge there for, for me and for us is, is communication and engagement, getting, you know, staff to, you know, to, to engage and improve this culture, this sort of culture that sort of, you know, died off a little bit for the last couple of years. So, you know, I think, Sort of advice is, is is sort of you know listen to other people you know how other people are doing things you know take little you know experiences and sort of like advice from other people yeah I'm finding that's a bit of a challenge and I think the more people I talk to um the, the better it's helping me in my role in sort of bringing things back here to sort of in, in help but yeah that's a bit of a challenge that I'm getting at the moment amazing well thank you so much fiona it's been wonderful to have this time with you and thank you ever so much for everyone who's come along to support us today and fiona um really really appreciate it um we hope you have a wonderful rest of the well it's bank holiday weekend this weekend isn't it? So have a fantastic short oh, week nice. next week everybody absolutely but yeah thank you so much everyone for joining us and we look forward to seeing you all again soon Lovely. Thank, right. you. Thanks. thank you thanks everyone Bye.